Mike. Um, so I actually listened to your video response before listening, um, or your video response to me before doing my response for you. Um, and you did bring up a good point in my video, which also connects back to um, what you were saying in yours, how, um, yeah, I actually have communicated quite a bit on Facebook with a lot of different cultures, people, and um, I guess, yes, I guess that does count. Um, I think for me, I was um, in the mindset of, you know, in, in a way that they're also kind of part of growing up in the Bay Area, you know, everything is so multicultural and like I'm thinking of something different than that. So I guess you're right. <laughs> I have um, communicated with other cultures. Um, and then you also brought up um, how we both have a mutual thing or a mutual love for food uh, and food network. And you brought up the channel or the show Chop. And yes, I love that show. And um, I do see how there are, because the baskets are so unconventional that bringing food from different areas and different cultures to make that basket work. Um, so I guess that's also a tie into the um, multicultural um, and intercultural ways. Um, I also wanted um, to also touch on how you spoke about um, the Black Lives Matter movement um, for 2020. Um, I do think that that was also, right, that brought different cultures together um, and to me for the better. Um, and putting it more in the light and more in the spotlight. Um, however, like how you were saying that with the news, um, whenever they were showing video of the riots, they were always showing that it was, you know, blacks that were doing the rioting, which most of the time it wasn't. Um, and I think, right, once again, as you had pointed out, using once again as a scapegoat. Um, I also believe that um, in your video, you touched upon YouTube and how that's one of the biggest ways that people connect um, to different cultures. And I completely agree. You can find everything and anything on YouTube. Um, but I do think that even though YouTube has everything, it still takes a person and for them to change and for their mind to be open to looking into different things um, for there to be that open connection um, for different cultures. So in a sense, right, like if I were to look up how to cook something on YouTube, YouTube's gonna go ahead and filter more of those sort of things for me to see since that's an interest of mine. However, they're not gonna go ahead and put like, I don't know, um, some news from China or news from Australia on there just to see if I am interested. And that's what I think is the difference is that it still does take a certain mindset for the internet um, or it still, excuse me, takes some different mindset for a person to change, even though all that information is out there and at your fingertips, it still takes the person and not necessarily the internet makes that easier. It just makes it a way for people to connect. Um, you also brought up how you use MySpace was your first social media platform. Um, and make myself even older. And one of my first social media was Zynga, which was before MySpace. Um, and then through that, you, I did make a lot of friends that you know weren't from here, weren't from California. Um, and unfortunately, I don't keep in touch with those people. I don't know where they are now. Um, but I guess it was that little taste of having that connection um, to different people and having um, you know that excitement about knowing somebody new and what their different thoughts are. And so I think that in the sense, the internet is a great thing for that. Well, once again, it was a great post to listen to. Thank you so much. And I will see you next one next week. Bye.